afternoon. Uh, my name's Martine Croxall. Ordinarily, I'm a presenter with the BBC News Channel, but today I have the pleasure of moderating today's debate. This year, we've chosen to focus on another very topical issue, the refugee crisis. And the question posed is, too little compassion or too much? With millions of people displaced by violence in their home countries, hundreds of thousands have fled to Europe to find safety. Some EU member states, especially the smaller ones on the periphery of the bloc, have said that they've been overwhelmed by the numbers arriving. Some governments have put up border fences, while members of the public have turned out to welcome refugees disembarking at railway stations. But as we've seen in the past, compassion can become fatigued, and some commentators have warned of the risk of a populist backlash. Let me start with a, uh, a note on the title, actually, of the debate, uh, uh, Compassion. Uh, and uh, I just wonder whether we should focus on, uh, on an emotion, uh, what compassion is. Uh, compassion is the positive emotion, and this is good. Uh, but compassion also meets negative emotions, uh, which are fears. And uh, unfortunately, when uh, fears meet uh, compassions, Normally what happens is that uh, fears trump uh, compassions. I would prefer to frame the debate uh, rather in terms of uh, uh, other concepts, like duties. For instance, do we have as Europeans a duty uh, to help people in uh, distress? Compassion can be more powerful than fear. And, and historically, compassion as an emotion has been a stabilizing one in the following sense, we as European, as European continent were defined by our response to the Second World War atrocities. Is the UK complying with the duties to do its fair bit? And I say no, because the numbers are, are, are too low given the capacity of the, of the UK. And if you, if you see this in the light of the broader views of, on immigration of the government, then I, I wouldn't say that there's little compassion, I'd say there's no compassion. The German view is there was a lot of disappointment and almost shock. I mean, there was a lot That's of a comments very diplomatic saying... diplomatic word to use, isn't it? Disappointment. <laughs> disappointment. Uh, then I said shock. Um, <laughs> because, because everyone knows that, that actually the UK is the, is the cradle of refugees I and mean, Jews and from all over the world. Britain has a strong tradition of taking in people that are trying to escape uh, settlement somewhere else in the world. So, and then there was this strong feeling that this is very much driven by domestic interests. And it's, it's driven by an upcoming referendum on the European Union membership. Is it so difficult, actually, to come up with the, the following policies? A coordinated and common, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, kind of uh, defense and protection of the external this. borders of, of the Union. Well, that's what so the efforts are being how, made to how, try to do that. How, how, how difficult is, is very that? Difficult. Very di why that, is that so difficult. Very difficult. Well, and, and why, why uh, is it so, so difficult? Actually, all these countries, they have, uh, I think most of them, they have sufficient capacities. Uh, some of them, they need help uh, here and there. So again, it, 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 it's a matter of uh, coordination and political will. We have Ireland, we have Sweden, we have Austria, who are traditionally neutral countries. Very different to France, United Kingdom, of course, to, to seats on the, on the permanent, permanent seats on the Security Council. Very different approach. So if we have a common defence, common security approach, you're actually challenging the neutrality of those three member states. There has to be a global approach. Of course there does. And there has to be a global approach to actually sorting out the problems within Syria, within uh, Iraq, you know, within the Middle East dealing with radicalisation and fund fundamentalism and actually allowing people to want to return to their home countries. All of the Syrians, if they decide to come, there will be 10 million. So Europe is over 500 uh, million. What, what kind of uh, uh, social problem we are talking, uh, talking about? So, well, uh, so some people are saying that, say yeah, that, well, that there are well, of course, if, if uh, these 10 million come to Bulgaria, Bulgaria is 7 million and it will be a huge problem. But if, they <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but if these 10 million, they're, they're spread around Europe, nobody will notice them. Yes, the geography does put us in a, should we say, a far different situation than, say, Bulgaria. Or, or countries on the edge of the European Union. Um, but you know, we do have a humanitarian duty and we have a proud record. We have a proud record, not least the Huguenots, the Ashkenazi, the Ugandan Asians. Um, we have a long proud history, but what concerns me about this issue is actually this, this huge 
in biblical proportions what we're facing now. I mean, over 400,000 people within the last quarter have registered, as, uh, registered for asylum within the European Union. You know, Germany is now talking about over a million people. There's all this guessing going on. Why did Angela Merkel do what she did? Because this was supposedly a very lonely decision when she um, left the Dublin Agreement and said we take in any Syrian uh, refugee and by that violating actually European uh, rules. The image of the Hungarians setting up fences again was, this is, no one really knows, but this is what is said that really hit her. Walls and fences being built up in, in Europe again, and so she took those decisions. But arguably, there are millions of people who would meet the criteria for being regarded as refugees. How, well, real how realistic is it for laws and policies that the, e the, the European Parliament might formulate to say, we've done all we can do. How can any country have an upper limit? Because under the 51 Convention yeah. for Human Rights, so, we have a legal yeah. obligation. So. so we don't know, God forbid, what's around the corner if some tsunami comes across the continent and, you know, and there's you know, huge relocation needed. Everybody is entitled to protection. Fear about losing identity, fear about terrorism, fear about cohesion, they are overplayed. And I think compassion as an emotion backed up by justice, can actually overpower those feelings. So I don't, I can't give you a figure. She said, we have shuffled us. We will manage in the, in the height of the refugee crisis. And it's something that, it's a positive message. But now, three months after, it's hitting reality. And the reality is that now the AFD, which is the, call it right-wing party, is the third strongest party all of a sudden. The European partner said, you, you caused this, which is complete nonsense in the end because why are there so many refugees? Why is the situation in Syria? It's certainly not because Angela Merkel said we manage it. But she did cause the mass exodus. She, she did. She sent out a very you, clear how message. How can you rationally it's because prove she, that? Because she sends a clear message. She, you know, but, well, weren't they already it, coming, Jim? Yeah, but because not, but, yeah, to Ma from Martin, they were, but they back were, home. but they were, but not in the numbers they were. So you know, that's my point. But you, you can know. never prove that. Well, I'm sorry. The, I would say the numbers speak for themselves. My party sent a very very early message when calling for the boats to be sent back. Now that might have sounded extremely callous at the time, but we, we followed the example of what <coughs> Prime Minister John Howard did in Australia, you know, sending a very clear message. And yes, I know, I know that doesn't take care of the people routes, you know, the, the land routes where, you know, where people... It's people also been massively off. controversial. It has been, it has been controversial, but if you, look at the, if you look at the final effect, lives were saved. And, you know, and, and the smugglers realised that their assets were being seized, they were losing their boats, and so consequently, yeah, they were at an advantage because there wasn't the land route that there is, but it sent a very, yeah. it sent a very clear, clear message. This is controversial, and the idea that we uh, are going to send a message to the criminal organisation by using people on a boat at mid-sea as a means to send a message, that to, me, that to me seems very, very wrong. That if you have someone whose life is at risk, and you turn away the boat just to give a message to the criminal organisations, there must be other ways to stop them operating. And we cannot use people on a boat as a means to send a message to organisations. That, that to me sounds really wrong. Well, I'm sorry. You know, it, 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 history has shown, shown the approach. It's worked. It might work. It might stop it. But, but George, once that route is stopped, then it allows resources to be that, concentrated that's, that's in the whole areas. point. That's the whole point of human rights, not to use people as a means to an end. Even if that, no. end, even if that end is worthy, mm. we, can't, we have to treat them with dignity, person by yes, person. We do. Person by person. We do. And we, we do. No, we, 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 we do. But if, I want to take but if, those, if, those, if those boats have been stopped, you know, Alan Curdy wouldn't have drowned in the sea, quite frankly. If a message had been sent, and the people who were using, the, using those vehicles, under, you know, if word got back to them that there was a chance that that boat would be stopped and turned around, they wouldn't be spending the money in the first place. What I'm concerned about is, is the large number of single young males who are coming in. And, and the, Why and does that trouble you? Because I feel... What are, they, what are some of them escaping from? You know, we've, we've heard what Islamic states have been saying with regards, saying they will use the, the refugee crisis, the migrant crisis, as a vehicle to export jihad to the continent of Europe. Regrettably... Well, haven't, we got, but, haven't we got our, our but, own but, homegrown... Yes, we have, but regrettably the tragedy in Paris has, I think, possibly changed... Uh, President Hollande's approach to how he looks. But they at, weren't Syrian, were no, they? No, but... They were but, from but, Europe. But if you look at it, going back to the political response, 
what, what all of us have been saying here, that we've seen the response with, uh, with, with uh, Front National, you know, what has happened in last weeks. So she is now trying to somehow convince Germans that we, they will find, the government will find a way to stop the influx of refugees. So actually in the last weeks you have seen quite sharp measures, for example, there's been, um, they've announced that um, there will no be any more family reunification, um, that everyone has to register. So um, this is what, is what is happening now because she, she, she also looks at the, at the polls and the polls clearly show that she, uh, she is slumped. I mean, she was at almost 80% a year ago and now she's less than 50%. I think that in substance, this was the right policy. Well, as the leader of the most... Uh, uh, powerful and resourceful European country, well, she said, we're going to take the, the biggest burden. Uh, and, and this was a good act of leadership. Uh, where she uh, probably fell short was that she underestimated or probably overestimated the intelligence of other European leaders and the capacity of their states uh, to react accordingly. A lot of the decision depends on how governments want to please their voters and what will happen in the next election. So a decision that won't go down very well with the public is not very likely. Mm. So if, if people are worried about immigration and are worried about refugees and are worried about this and that, then the government will have incentives not to uh, show compassion.